morning students welcome to you all for the second session of uh, myself that is with related to biomolecules and today's topic which we are going to discuss is biomolecules when we come to biomolecules here when we come to biomolecules it is as earlier in the previous topic i told you that how you are supposed to study for your competitive level examinations that is generally it is these examinations are conducted based on the ncert syllabus what they have been given to you and you are all been following the ncert book in a ncert book you are going to find these following exercises that is 14.1 14.2 14.3 sir what about the other exercises other exercises are also important but this is very 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 important based on the analysis conducted again i'm telling you it is for k set neat j for all this level examination first point if you are not having time first you finish off carbohydrates the chances of asking questions on carbohydrates is maximum compared to the other topics then proteins then nucleic acid there is chances for the other topics also but usually what the student will happen is they will be negligent in studying the complete chapter that is a problem with the students if you are coming to a such a situation what i suggest you is at least touch the very important topics it will be very helpful to you so with this note i will just uh, proceed uh, with the questions before i go to the questions i want to tell you one more point here i am not going to discuss about detailed synopsis i'll be focusing on the questions what is required so what is the first work you are supposed to do here is you have to revise the chapter rank and my questions is based on the subtopics subtopics see like this what i given you subtopics wise so you can study subtopic wise and also got it next we'll go to the next question when we go to the next question the first question is find the non reducing sugar among the following find the non reducing sugar among the following so in my previous session also you have seen i am not going to give you any options so at least you make a note of it which is a non reducing sugar so to know which is a non reducing sugar what you have to be aware here is you have been aware about sugars one is rs sugars one is nrs one is nrs nrs is non reducing sugar so in this nrs at least put an effort to learn minimum one example that is sucrose which one sucrose at least one example properly sucrose let me come to the sucrose what does it is made up of it is made up of fructose and glucose fructose and glucose and that to which fructose it is beta form this is alpha form this is alpha form so which are the examples for reducing sugars if you are make a note of it the reducing sugars is been given as glucose maltose galactose are the few examples there are many other examples we will do that later is it clear to you students now we'll see the options the first option here is glucose sucrose maltose then cellulose so which is the correct option so directly you can uh, make a note of it uh, the answer is uh, which one sucrose since it's a first question i'll give you the importance of all the four options also glucose what is glucose add a point that is it is an example for aldose it is an example for which one aldose what is maltose maltose is a disaccharide 
maltose is a disaccharide which is obtained from which one amylose amylopectin amylose amylopectin which are the polysaccharide what is this cellulose cellulose is also an disaccharide which is been obtained from the polymer cellulose which is obtained from the polymer cellulose which is the enzyme which is going to act on this cellulose is cellulase got it so the correct option for this is sucrose sucrose is considered as non reducing sugar next question we'll move on to so now what is the structure of sucrose it is made up of i have already given you a clear cut idea that the sucrose is made up of two monomers which are the two monomers children alpha glucose and beta glucose beta glucose ah beta fructose now the question framer has gone little more depth to which structure does the fructose is going to have the fructose is going to have the structure of the which one children furano furon ring and glucose is going to have pyron ring glucose is going to have which ring pyron ring so which is the option which is resembling the pyron and furon ring is the question which is the question which is the answer children so if you are just observing this options that is beta d fructofuranosyl alpha d glucopyranose beta d fructofuranosyl beta d glucopyranosyl so here majority of the student what they do is they will do it as second option please remember it is not beta it is alpha that's the reason the answer is answer is option 1 children what is the answer option 1 we'll move on to the next slide when we go to this next slide the d glucose is treated with d glucose is treated with d glucose is treated with excess of acetic anhydride the product obtained is again i'm telling you students you have to know the chemical reactions with regard to structure of elucidation of glucose structural elucidation of glucose all the chemical reactions i'll just put a point for you the following reactions how do we know that the glucose is having six carbon atoms how do we know that glucose is having six carbon atoms i'll just move on to one slide that is how do we know that glucose is having six carbon atoms is the first point what you have to know that the reagent what we are using is the reagent is we are using is hydrogen iodide when i use hydrogen iodide glucose is getting converted to nxn what is the indication that this indicates that glucose is having six carbons in what straight chain this indicates that there are six carbon atoms in straight chain which is the reagent you have to remember then after that you have to know one more the reagent which reagent acetic anhydride acetic anhydride is the reagent where we are going to use in order to identify the presence of oh groups presence of oh groups the product formed will be an penta acetyl group the product form will be which one penta acetyl group is it clear to you so presence of oh group sir 
when we come to presence of OH group, how many OH groups are there in a glucose is the next question. I will give you the explanation for that also children. So now when I come to glucose, when I come to glucose, when I come to glucose, glucose is having the molecular formula C6H2LO6. Fructose is also having the molecular formula C6H2LO6. They have both same molecular formula. Then what is difference in these two? They are structurally different in case of, in case of the functional groups. So that's the reason these two are called as functional isomers. What are these two are called as functional isomers. They differ by the functional group. In case of glucose, we are going to have an aldehyde group. In case of fructose, we are going to have ketone group. That is the structural difference. In case of aldehydes, we are, in case of glucose, we are, it is an aldehyde group. What is an aldehyde group? Children, C double bond O, H. Here, ketone group, C double bond O, it is going to be a carbonyl group. Both of them are having carbonyl groups. Got it? Next, after this, when we are focusing on this, what is the structure of it is, it is having six carbon, one, two, three, four, five, six, six carbon. Then it is going to have the aldehyde at the first carbon. What about here, ketone, sir? It is also having six carbon, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. It is also having six carbon. Where is the ketone group? It is going to be present. Ketone group is present at here, C double bond O at the second carbon. Where is the OH group in case of the aldoses? Right, left, right, right. In this case, OH, third carbon atom, left, fourth carbon atom, OH, OH, OH. Why did I give you this structure is, if you go to the higher uh, level of uh, questions, you should know how many alcoholic groups are there in case of aldoses, that is glucose and keto, that is fructose. So when I am focusing on this, your primary alcoholic groups, how many primary alcoholic groups are there? How many primary alcoholic groups are there if I question? One, two, it is going to be only on the sixth carbon, one voyage. So which is the primary? I am going to use the laser, you just see here, this is the, this is the one which is being given as primary. sixth carbon, this is primary, this is secondary, then this one is also secondary, this is also secondary. So in case of glucose, how many secondary OH groups are there? It is going to be, in case of glucose, it is three, three OH groups are going to be there, which is acting as secondary. Say so this is primary, then secondary OH groups. Secondary OH groups are there on which carbon? Second, third, fourth and fifth. So it is going to be four secondary OH groups. Second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon and fifth carbon. When I come to the fructose, when I come to fructose, primary OH groups are going to be two which is that carbon atom 1 and carbon atom 6. Carbon atom 1 and 6 primary OH groups. 
Then secondary voyage groups, how many are going to be there? Secondary voyage groups are going to be there on how many carbon atoms? Secondary voyage groups, can you, I think this marker is not uh, clear, we have to use only white other than white we cannot use. Anyway, so secondary voyage groups, how many secondary voyage groups are there? It is going to be third, fourth and fifth. So C2, third, C3, C4, C5. Got it? Three secondary OH groups, one ketone group. So this idea you should have always. When you have it, you can answer the questions easily. So now let us go to the question. D-glucose, D-glucose, D-glucose is treated with excess of acetic anhydride. I have just now I gave you the acetic anhydride is being there to indicate the presence of OH group. So presence of OH group means how many OH groups are there in case of glucose to give you pentaacetyl derivative 5 OH groups that's the reason the option is which one which is the option option 3 pentaacetyl derivative next which among the following does not reduce Benedict's reagent Benedict's reagent, Tollin's reagents are those which reduce the reducing sugars, non-reducing sugars. So in this case, Tollin's reagent, all doses it answers, ketones does not it answers. So which one? Which among the following is a non-reducing sugar? Non-reducing sugar in this case of the following is, which of the following is non-reducing sugar? Children? Which one? Glucose, galactose, sucrose, maltose. So non-reducing sugar is which one? Sucrose. Just now we have studied non-reducing sugar is sucrose. So Benedict reagents it is for reducing sugar. So you have to remember this is for a reagent for which one? Reducing sugar. So for NRS it is uh, not answered. So it is which option? It is third option. It is option three. Next. Fructose reduces failing solution. Fructose reduces failing solution due to the presence of fructose. It's a keto sugar. It is a keto sugar. But recall the aldehydes, ketones and carboxylic acid chapter which you have studied. In aldehydes, ketones and carboxylic acids, what you have studied, ketones does not answer the failing test. But fructose is an ketone. We give it as a ketone exam. But it is going to reduce means it is reacting with failing solution. Means it is not having the ketone group. That is it is having what you call as ketal. Ring formation will be there. So in the option, which one is the one which is giving you the ring formation? Which one? Which one children? It cannot be hydroxyl group, aldehyde group, ketone group. It has to be hydroxy ketone group. So it is option 4. Next. Aldoses can be differentiated from ketoses by what? We know that aldoses, the moment anyone is asking question, aldoses means you should know that it is glucose. The moment it is ketosis, if it is coming to your mind, you have to remember that it is fructose. It is fructose. So when we are coming to this, what is the answer? Tollins reagent, failing solution, Grignard reagent, both 1 and 2. Both 1 and 2. All doses can be differentiated from ketosis by Tollins reagent, failing solution, Grignard reagent, both 1 and 2. Which one? Just now, previous question, failing solutions. Failing solution. Next. And Tollins. 
next the number of tripeptides formed by three different amino acids the number of tripeptides formed by three amino acids so take this three amino acids as a b c check the combinations a c b one more b a c then one more b c a the order is not repeated then a b then c b a do you find any order which is repeated c b a is there any c b a is there no here see here c a b is there b c a b c a b c a anything is there no so totally it is going to be how many you are going to get it again i am telling you i have not given you the options the moment you read the question in your mind it has to go there are questions we have to use the option method but here this is a numerical type got it it is a numerical type in biomolecules so when we come to such questions you have to answer directly so which are the options 3 8 6 then 5 already you got the answer as 6 so which is the correct answer children it is 6 done we'll move on to the next question alpha maltose alpha maltose consists of alpha maltose i have already given you in the beginning of the session only alpha maltose is an sugar which is considered as disaccharide disaccharide means it is made up of two monomers under this two monomers it is a glucose unit like sucrose disaccharide but it is a non reducing sugar here it is an which one disaccharide it is having two monomers it is called as homo because it is made up of uh, two monomers which are same in case of uh, sucrose it is different so now here alpha glucose unit which are linked by 14 so which is the option which is giving you that alpha 14 linkage alpha 14 linkage which is the option which is going to give you this is one alpha d glucopyranose unit with one beta beta it is not possible next and they told the linkage is also 1 2 which is not possible then second option two alpha d glucopyranose unit with 1 2 glycosidic linkage this is also not possible so two beta and 1 4 glycosidic linkage this is also not possible then the last option is two alpha d glucopyranose they might confuse you with a uh, furon ring also which one furon ring also which is you have to be remember this is been given as 1 4 understood did you get the clarity okay so it is which option children it is fourth option it is which one fourth option next how glucose is related with how glucose is related with fructose we already discussed functional group isomerism chain isomerism position isomerism geometrical isomer that's what again i'm telling you students stick on to it take the ncrt book focus on that point carbohydrates done this is one of the appeared question in the examination which type of isomers how many primary alcoholic groups are there how many secondary alcoholic groups are there you have to be very confident in this okay so option is uh, which one children it is functional isomers it is functional isomers done next hydrolysis of sucrose this what we have seen earlier only where i was been telling you uh, the sucrose is having the monosaccharides Uh, which one beta beta 
beta fructose and alpha glucose i was asking monomers so if sucrose is undergoing hydrolysis means they will break down to give you what same but the answers what you are going to give it should be confident learn the monomers 10 times 20 times keep on writing got it keep on writing we have to stick on to the monomer sucrose you learn it like anything possible over one option will be there on the sucrose only inversion hydrolysis of sucrose is inversion esterification hydration now they have not asked anything about uh, monomers at all it's a new question that is why it is called inversion hydrolysis of sucrose is called as inversion because when sucrose will undergo hydrolysis it will give you alpha glucose and beta fructose beta fructose will show more liver rotator so sucrose will be in an inversion configuration when we undergo hydrolysis so option is inversion most of them will mark it as hydration who doesn't know that hydrolysis are you getting so here in case of carbohydrates it's an invert sugar sucrose another name is called as what children invert sugar so invert sugar because of this reason only they are going to have the inversion configuration is it clear to you they are going to have what inversion configuration the next question Which of the following is a trisaccharide? From the starting of the session of these biomolecules, we have been studying about only monosaccharides, disaccharides. Now you got a chance to know that trisaccharides. Children, what are trisaccharides? Trisaccharides are those sugars which are made up of three monomers. Three monomers, two glycosidic bonds. Always you take this as N minus one. That is, if you are getting a name as One minute, a moment. I'll take the marker. See, so, uh, you are having a name as tri. Tri means you take it as N. So monomers is N. I'll use the same technique. If you have seen my previous video, I'll use the same technique for wherever, whichever the chapter I do it. So this same technique is used for proteins also, children. So N, N is the monomer, tri means three monomers, disaccharide how many monomers, N value two, so it is a disaccharide, understood this point, then one more point here which you are going to come across is saccharide, saccharide means sugar, sugars is, sugars, how many sugars it is made up of, N minus one, rather you take sugar, I will recorrect it, you put it as glycosidic bonds which bonds glycosidic bonds so how many glycosidic bonds do you find n minus 1 answer done so trisaccharide how many glycosidic bonds n minus 1 two glycosidic bonds disaccharide how many monomers two how many glycosidic bonds one glucose it's not and disaccharide it's a monosaccharide so there is no glycosidic bonds in case of which one glucose in case of which one children glucose there is no glycosidic bonds any doubt about it okay fine I'll, I'll give you one challenging question that is tetrasaccharide tell me what about tetrasaccharide tetra means how many tetra pack you see no tetra pack juice is it clear so tetra pack tetra pack means what four how many monomers? Yeah, glare is there, you can't see. See, can you see the glare? Yeah, you can't see. Yeah, we'll go to here. How many monomers? How many monomers? How many, how many, how many, how many? Tetrasaccharide, four monomers. How many glycosidic bonds? Decrease one, that's all. Decrease, four will be come. One, two, three. Got it? Same technique, you can use it for proteins also, children. Proteins, dipeptide, dipeptide. Dipeptide means N value, N value of di is how much? Two. How many peptide bonds? One. Is it clear to you? Tripeptide, tripeptide is having how many amino acids, they will ask. It's very easy, tri is there, they will mention it as three easily. But how many peptide bonds are there in tripeptide? 
they'll get confused use this formula simply n minus 1 when i use n minus 1 tripeptide n minus 1 2 two peptide bonds two glycosidic bonds trisaccharide two in this fast movement if you are able to get no confusion a simple tip always i tell to my student is be confident what you have learnt that's all what you have learnt be confident because you are coming across a different type of examination that is option method option method because 25 percent 25 percent is the 100 percent answer so if you know little also you can just challenge yourself and give the answer so we'll come to this trisaccharide what is the confusion what they have given the answer we can't do anything in this they have not asked any peptide bonds or sorry uh, glycosidic bonds all those things they have not asked but we have to know few examples so ribose it's a monosaccharide children sucrose is a disaccharide raffinose is a trisaccharide so it is option is three I'll add one point for you. Tetrasaccharide is tachyose. Tetrasaccharide is tachyose. We'll go on to the next question. Glucose on reaction with failing solution gives glucose. Glucose is having one aldehyde group and one primary alcoholic group. So if I've been giving you a uh, concept on organic chemistry, I use SK golden triangle. That is, alcohols will undergo oxidation to give you aldehydes and ketones and aldehydes and ketones will undergo oxidation to give carboxylic acid. So that with related to that golden triangle, if you just observe the aldehydes will undergo oxidation to give you carboxylic acid, not an alcohol. Whereas alcohols can give aldehydes also, carboxylic acids also. It depends on the what type of uh, reagent which you are going to come across, whether it is an oxidizing, strong oxidizing agent or uh, mild oxidizing agent. If it is a mild oxidizing agent, alcohols will undergo oxidation to give you alcohols. Whereas if it is a strong oxidizing agent, alcohols will give you carboxylic acids. Now with failing solution, it will give you salts. It will give you the salt that is carboxylate that is copper sulfate copper sulfate will be getting changed to cuprous oxide plus one oxidation state to saccharic acid to saccharic acid so it is option two and three option two and three for this question i'll repeat glucose on reaction with welling solution gives cupric oxide cuprous oxide saccharic acid to carboxylic acids that is oxidation reaction because aldehyde group i have given you already the structure in the earlier aldehyde group it contains as well as the primary alcoholic group both will undergo oxidation next the monomers present in starch starch is having two components children which are the two components i am just briefing out the concepts amylopectin it is made up of two components amylose and amylopectin what is amylose amylose is unbranched this is branched and this amylopectin is having similarity with the structure of which one glycogen structure of which one glycogen so the monomer units of starch are glucose i gave you same example glucose glucose pyranose galactose so here i will rechange it rechange it you take this as alpha this one as beta yeah now it will be giving you a clarity answer for this what is this answer is it made up of alpha or beta see beta glucose means you should know animals eating cellulose it is which is present in grass which is present in grass that's the reason if god has created us to have this enzyme in our body cellulose it was so often we need not to work at all we could have eaten the grass like herbivorous animals and we could have got the energy but it is not true we don't have cellulase enzyme 
we have salivary amylase salivary amylase will uh, break down the starch they break down the starch so now so here when we come across uh, the starch it is made up of which glucose it is alpha glucose which glucose alpha glucose so which option it is option 1 option 1 next the letter d please remember when it comes to letter d in case of carbohydrates letter d means what does it indicate d capital d and small d already you know that it is d and small d. small d sir it doesn't make any difference sir we learned it from our low class yes it makes a lot of difference here children d is based on the position of oh group present on the asymmetric carbon atom which is far from which is far from anomeric carbon atom anomeric carbon atom in case of glucose is carbon atom 1 carbon atom 1 so d is present on right hand side means oh is present on right hand side means we'll give you d configuration and we also compare with related to glycerol dehyde and uh, we'll give this uh, notation as d so what does it uh, represent uh, let us see it is configuration at all chiral carbon atoms is the question all chiral carbon atoms so please remember glucose will have how many chiral carbon atoms is also a question so uh, let me uh, draw a conclusion of uh, glucose where uh, how many chiral carbon atoms glucose 1 2 3 4 5 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 there are six carbon atoms which i have written students in this six carbon atoms which is asymmetric second carbon third carbon fourth carbon fifth carbon these are the chiral carbons these are the chiral carbons make a note of this then six carbon is the primary alcoholic group next so configuration of all chiral carbons we don't give we'll give it on the chiral carbon which is far from anomeric carbon atoms then dextrorotatory wrong that is a monosaccharide no fourth option configuration at a particular chiral carbon that to fifth carbon atom we will give it so you have to make a note of that so it is uh, which option fourth option next which of the following cannot be hydrolyzed into aldose and ketose which is the carbohydrate which cannot be hydrolyzed into aldose and ketose the moment what you will get monosaccharide means what which cannot give aldose and ketose aldose and ketose is given only by sucrose which is like a play they have played the with many of times with the sucrose only so but here they are given disaccharide next monosaccharide so monosaccharide are called as what simple sugars these are called as what simple sugars so they cannot be hydrolyzed is monosaccharides what are oligosaccharides sir these are the carbohydrates which can give 2 to 9 monomers they are the one which can give the monomers how many 2 to 9 monomers remember this point next which of the following statement is not true about glucose which of the following statement is not true about glucose not true so in my previous session also i told you incorrect all those things remember me take only 2 seconds extra time your answer will be always 100% correct if you are in hurry for such questions because the option itself will make you to go wrong got it they would have slightly change read the options take 2 seconds more time to answer such questions like incorrect correct next it is an aldo exos on heating it forms an xn xn it is an aldo exos glucose correct it is present in pyranose form it is also correct we want not answer you got it 
the moment what the student will do is they ignore this not and they will say it's an aldo exos it is true only if we want which is a false statement so according to this it's a tertiary alcohol which one tertiary alcohol both uh, which one fructose as well as glucose does not contain tertiary alcohol is it clear to you so it is which option fourth option it is which option fourth option next we'll come to proteins and amino acid next question it is pk values are given pk values are given 2.3 and 9.7 respectively what is the isoelectric point so isoelectric point of an amino acid how do we calculate isoelectric point of an amino acid is given based on sum of it divided by 2 so easily you take it round off method only i am using 9.7 2.3 it is going to be 10 12 12 divided by 2 it is going to be option is how much 6 option is how much 6 is it clear to you sir you do read it again 2.3 plus 9.7 divided by 2 it is going to be how much 12 12 by 2 it is 12 by 2 is how much children 6 answer is 6 so which is the option which is showing you 6 it is third option we'll continue with the next question 